The next thing we're going to look at uh, within Chrome Developer Tools is the Network tab. And this is useful for uh, quite a few reasons. And we're going to take a look at a few of probably the most used in, uh, in this part. So you can see that we have a few requests just here. Uh, but we'll skip this and just pop over to our text editor and just see what we're doing within here first of all. So the first thing is I'm loading in uh, jQuery from Google hosted libraries. So that's the first request that we're making to another file. The second is we're making a request to our app.js file stored in the JS directory, which you can see here is making an Ajax request using jQuery to users.php. And users.php is just a JSON file. It has a list of users just here. So we've got three users and we're just JSON encoding that data and sending it through or echoing it out rather. So when we go ahead and refresh a page or hit a page initially, what we get up in the network tab is every request that's made to uh, each of the files. And we can see different statuses here, different types, uh, the size, the time it took. And we have this timeline here as well, which can be quite useful. So the first thing we're going to look at is this one just here. So if we click on this, uh, we get a little bit more information uh, about this just on the side. So this is basically just a request to this URL. So the file that we're serving is obviously index.html just here. So when we see this uh, under the headers tab, we get lots of information with all the headers that are being sent with this request. So for example, the remote address, which is the address that I'm accessing this on. So it's localhost on port 8000, the exact request URL, the request method, which is obviously get, but this could be post if it's an Ajax request. And we also get the status code as well. So if you have an error, you might see a 500 error here. You can automatically see that there's been a problem and you can go ahead and fix up whatever's happened. You might see a 404 here if the file uh, couldn't be found or the page couldn't be found, uh, etc. And you've also got the response headers as well. So these are being sent by the server. So the server type, uh, the uh, date, last modified, transfer encoding, etc. So this can be quite useful if you are diving into this uh, for whatever reason. Now we've also got the request headers. So for example, uh, any data we send along will be included here and we'll be looking at that in just a moment as well. But apart from that, you have all of the standard. So uh, the uh, accepted encoding, uh, the accepted language, the cache control, things that you might need in the future. So what we're going to do now is just take a look at a couple of these other files and see uh, what we can find out uh, from these. So for example, this jQuery file is being served by uh, Google hosted library. So it's an external file It's being uh, requested from this URL here. And we have a 304 not modified. This basically means that it's been cached. It hasn't been modified. So we uh, don't need to re-download it. So a 304, that's basically what that is. And we have all the other information here uh, that we've just uh, spoken about. Uh, the same kind of thing goes for the app.js file. Again, it's pretty sh standard. But what we really want to focus on is this users.php file here. So remember, we are making an Ajax request to users.php. It will be the get type by default. Uh, this, in fact, should be get or post. And then we could have something like data type JSON, which is the type we expect back. But you can kind of ignore this. So this is the type of request. If we just refresh again and click on this, you can see that we have a request method of get. We get 200 because that file was found and it was served OK. And again, we get the response headers, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the reason this is useful, uh, we are making an Ajax request. So we could even filter, filter it by XHR requests, which will filter all of your uh, Ajax requests, things like that. So we can see these, uh, this list of things in here. So if you are making a lot of Ajax requests, you can filter it and that's really nice. So there are all these filters here. So for example, scripts, we know that these two are scripts. Styles, we don't have any attached. Images, if you do have any. And you've got things like media fonts, documents, web sockets, all of which are useful if you are filtering. 
But let's take a look at actually sending some data through to users.php and see what kind of thing we can pick up from this. So in app.js, let's go ahead and define some data in here. So let's just say blah one. We'll just use that as an example. And let's refresh, click on this. You can see that that's being sent as a get request. So it's in the URL, it's in the query string. And we can actually see this being sent through if we just scroll down here, we have this new query string parameters section and we see blah one. Now that's all well and good because we can see it being sent here. So this is pretty obvious. But if it was a type of post, then it's less obvious because we can't see it in the query string. It's being sent uh, via post data. But still, we see form data here and we see blah one. So if you are having trouble debugging data that is sent through to this file, then this makes it really easy to see. Now let's just switch back to all and let's go over to app.js. And now let's look at some of these other tabs. So let's look at preview here. All this does is it gives you the contents of that file. It's just a JavaScript file on your server being served. So we can see the, the uh, code for this just here. But more interestingly, when we head over to something like users.php, we get a preview of the data that we got back. So this is just a JSON string here. But what the uh, Chrome developer tools will do is it will put this into an object for you that you can actually examine. So here we obviously have a name, which has a value. We have a username, which has a value. And the same for these two records as well. So this means that uh, as a JavaScript object, we can actually just look through this. So we can see the name property there. When we go to this one, we can see the name and the username property and the same with this as well. This is really useful uh, to actually uh, take a look at. And what we'll also be looking at in this series is the console, which will be working with this data as well. So we can see what we can output within the console. So we'll learn about that in a bit. So we also have things like response data. So this is just literally the raw data. And we also have the timing as well. So it will give you uh, all of the timing statistics for this, how long it took, et cetera, et cetera. So it's pretty straightforward. And really just to examine any files that you're using, whether it's styles, images, or probably more useful uh, Ajax requests, you can go ahead and examine all of this uh, and it just makes life a lot easier when you are doing this. Imagine now not having Chrome developer tools open. You don't really know what's going on on the page, so you can't debug anything. So having this open makes it really, really easy to go ahead and just work with any of these files.